It seems that in the world of audio that 32-bit float is slowly becoming the norm as more and more manufacturers come out with 32-bit float audio recorders. And now Deity has thrown their hat into the ring. The PR2 from Deity, this is a pocketable 32-bit float audio recorder or palmable, it fits in the palm of my hand, however you wanna say it. This tiny little audio recorder is absolutely packed with features that not only amateurs, but even professional videographers out there I think would find extremely useful. So let's take a closer look at it. So of course, one of the big selling points of the recorder is that it offers 32-bit float, which we'll just briefly, briefly go over because I'm sure you already know what that is. But in case you don't, you can think of 32-bit float as your audio having more dynamic range. Like with a camera, if you have a camera with high dynamic range, it'll be able to see highlights and shadows at the same time. Well, cameras with low dynamic range won't be able to. It'll clip the highlights or the shadows will be unrecoverable. This is sort of the same thing with audio. So you can use this. And if you have somebody who's either extremely loud and flamboyant or somebody who's extremely quiet and whispery, this will be able to pick up up both of those and you know not introduce extra noise you'll be able to recover audio that is clipping much better than 24-bit audio because there's just more dynamic range it's time for a 32-bit float test okay now i'm whispering and me bringing up the audio you might be able to hear my fans and the lights in the room a little bit more and if i yell if i really yell ah and if i really talk loud i can see that it's clipping on the display on the mic but i shouldn't have any issue recovering this in post oddly enough my pr2 was shipped to me in 24-bit audio mode which i don't know why it wouldn't automatically be 32-bit float when that's like the main selling point of the recorder but i digress a small note is that 24-bit audio on this can be recorded in mono or stereo while 32-bit float is mono only but personally whenever i'm using a lav mic i don't want it to be stereo because if somebody turns their head you hear the audio shift i'd rather it be mono anyway i live in the united states and you might be wondering why am i bringing that up and why is that important to mention that's because the ddpr2 comes in two versions there's the global version and there's the u.s version essentially the global version has a couple more features that they cannot include in the u.s version there's a little switch on the top of the recorder and on the u.s version all that switch does is allow you to monitor the audio or turn off the monitoring to the audio and in the global version you can use the switch to record out of the microphone jack into a recorder and basically use this as a backup 32-bit float recorder in case you're worried about clipping or whatever the reason the US version doesn't have some of these extra features that the global version does have is because of a patent dispute with a company called Zaxcom Zaxcom has a patent in the United States that only allows them to produce audio recorders that both record internally and transfer transmit the audio to an external receiver. So DAD trying to avoid a lawsuit just came up with a US specific version that didn't have some of those features. You might be thinking, well, there are microphones from Rode and DJI that do exactly that, which is record internally and transmit audio to a, a receiver that also records there. And actually Rode is in a legal dispute with Zaxcom over patent infringement because of that. And I'm not, I don't know why I'm quoting, it is technically patent infringement. I just don't agree with it because I think an audio recorder that it records internally and transmit is such a general idea that to allow a patent on that is pretty stupid, but it is the world we live in and Deity is not trying to get sued, so that's why there are two versions. You can either throw the recorder just into your pocket or if you wanted to clip it onto your pants or your belt loop or something, there is an included clip which is easy to slide on and off. And the fact that it is optional and removable does allow it to be a little bit smaller than it otherwise would be. Besides the switch on top, which we've already covered, there are only two buttons on the whole recorder, which makes it really easy to use. It's actually very intuitive how you uh, navigate the menus. You just quickly press press the record button once to access the menus, and then the, the record button actually doubles as a scroll wheel. So you can scroll up or down in the menus, you select by hitting the record button, and you can go back by hitting the yellow button on the side, which is also the power button. To turn it on, obviously you just hold down the power button or you hold it down to turn it off. And the nice thing is, is if you triple tap the power button on the side, it will lock it. So you can't accidentally start or stop a recording. So once you have it recording and you you know put it on your talent that you're trying to mic up, you can go ahead and lock the record the great thing about the PR2, which a lot of other 32-bit float audio recorders in the similar vein from other companies don't have, they, the other ones might be smaller because they run off of an internal battery, but once that dies, you gotta plug it in and charge it. But the great thing about the PR2, in my opinion, is that it runs on AA batteries. So once they die, you just go ahead and swap them out with another pair of AA batteries, and you don't really need to worry about recharging. In my opinion, it's so unprofessional for audio recorders to have their own internal battery, because when it's dead, you're just 
screwed. And what are you going to do? You're going to put the shoot on hold for an hour and a half while that charges. It's much more professional to be able to swap the batteries out with, you know, double A batteries, which are so common. I personally have rechargeable double A batteries, which I use in my other audio devices. And this is much preferred for me. I'm okay with the recorder being a little bit bigger to accommodate two double A batteries. The double A batteries are unfortunately both a pro and a con because they go hand in hand with the micro SD card. If I want to access the micro SD card, this is what I have to do. I have to take off the clip, which is a loose part, of course, so that can get lost. Then I have to take off the battery cover, which is another loose part. And then I have to take out both batteries, which are, of course, loose parts. So now we have four different loose parts just to get to the micro SD card, which is only accessible if you use your fingernail to, to get it out. But if I use the flat of my finger, there's no way that's coming out. I literally need to use my fingernail to get in there to get the micro SD card out. Luckily, you're probably not gonna be having to change this in the field because even at 32-bit float recording, you're getting like 43 hours of recording out of this. You could let this run through like three consecutive wedding days. And not only would you not run out of battery because the battery life, you get like 30 hours of battery life off of two AA batteries. But even if the batteries did die and you swapped them out, you have 43 hours of recording on the card. You're most likely not gonna be taking all this out and doing all this in the field, but this is a bit of an oversight. I really wish the micro SD card slot was on the side or something. It's a little bit annoying. You have to do all that to access it. On the top, you have two 3.5 millimeter jacks. One is an input and one is an output. The input is obviously for a microphone. The output would be if you were, you know, recording onto another device or, you know, using time code out of the output, which is a great thing about this. It has time code features. If you have a multicam setup and you don't want to worry about syncing everything later on, you can use time code in this, which is obviously really nice. You use the time code through the USB-C jack on the side. You can also do it on the 3.5 millimeter output jack. If you want to hear somebody nerd out about time code features, I'll link a video down below. I'm not super knowledgeable on it, so I'm not going to try to go on an extended tangent about time code, but it does have it in there so that's important to know the 3.5 millimeter input and output on the top are threaded that makes it a lot more professional so you're not accidentally having your lav mic pulled out to start a recording you just hold down the record button for three seconds and you do the same to stop it so it's not like you're going to be accidentally starting and stopping recordings all willy-nilly and again you have the lock feature to prevent it as well the other great thing is there is an auto lock feature so you can have it set that you know after you're done messing with things after 15 seconds it will automatically lock it so nothing else can be accidentally changed that's another great feature to have. And they also have a feature called always on, which is the recorder just always records from the moment you turn it on, it'll automatically start recording. That can be great if you're in a really fast paced environment. I don't see myself necessarily using that feature, but I do appreciate that it's in there and you have the option. DD ships this with its own lav mic, the W lav pro, which is extremely tiny. One thing I'll say is that when I first used this and I plugged headphones into the headphone jack, I thought that the microphone was super noisy, but it turns out that the preamps for the headphones are just on, honestly pretty low quality on this. You kind of always hear a hiss if you have it at a proper volume. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but just know that's not gonna be in your actual recording. It's just the headphone preamp. Something that I found extremely annoying is that I was sent the DD PR2 and the lav mic without a clip to accompany the lav mic. So there was no way to put the mic anywhere other than like taping it to my chest. Shortly after DD sent me this to do a review on, I was sent a promotional email saying that there is an accessory kit and it included clips and wind screens and moleskins and things like that. And I was extremely annoyed because I thought they intentionally didn't include a clip in order to try to get me to buy this $35 upcharge of this accessory kit. But luckily I watched a couple other reviews. It seems that other people were sent their DDPR2 with the lav mic clip included. It must have just been a quality control thing or some sort of mistake that I was sent one without unless they changed it for some reason. But I watched a pretty recent video from another reviewer. That's just weird. I, it, there should have definitely been a lav mic clip or even two considering you know how tiny and finicky it is. But uh, you know, that's my little tangent there that this thing is so much less usable because I was not sent a clip for the lav mic. And because the mic is so small, no other lav mic clips that I currently own work on it. So you might be wondering because this only records internally, how could you ever monitor once you have it set up on somebody? And luckily there is the Citus Audio app, which might sound vaguely similar 
similar to Cytus Link, and that's because, little known fact, that Deity is essentially like the audio branch of Aperture Amaran. So, you know, Cytus Link, Cytus Audio. But anyway, the Cytus Audio app, you can connect up to 48 PR2s. So if you had some giant production and for some reason you were using exclusively Deity PR2s to lab people up, you could listen to them all through the app. Um, you cannot record and monitor at the same time, but you can wirelessly monitor through the app to make sure your audio is sounding good and you can start and stop the recording in the app. Whenever you are monitoring in the app, you have this big pop-up that says, you know, audio transmitting or something like that. And that basically doesn't allow you to record at the same time. You have to close out that window and stop monitoring in order to use the app to start or stop recording. I'm not a huge fan of there being an app for everything, but it does add some extra functionality that the recorder wouldn't otherwise have. It gets a pass from me as a personal app hater. <laughs> this is what the PR2 sounds like. This is the lav mic that it was sent with versus the audio that I've been using the whole time, a Sennheiser MKE 600. Unfortunately, I can't even monitor it to hear what it sounds like because I have the US version. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that you can listen to it and monitor it when you're not recording, but the second you hit the record button, the monitoring immediately turns off because if it was still on, you could technically use that as an output to another recorder and then, you know, you're running into the patent problem that we talked about earlier. In conclusion, the DDPR2 is a nice feature packed palm size, pocketable, whatever you want to say, 32-bit float audio recorder. It has a lot of great features like the time code, the 32-bit float itself, obviously. I think it's going to be most useful for wedding videographers. I could see them literally miking the bride and groom at the beginning of the day. You could start the recording and let it run all day. You could do three weddings in a row like that and not run out of battery or SD card space. And personally, I've shot a wedding before I had a 32-bit float recorder where the bride was essentially whispering her vow and it was nearly impossible to bring the audio up to a level where you could make out the words that she was saying. So in that situation, I really wish I could have had a 32-bit float recorder. And even with her whispering, I could have brought up the volume to a point where it sounded good and didn't have a bunch of preamp hiss. You know, you live and you learn. I wish I had the PR2 at that moment. <laughs> I would say the PR2 is especially good value if you don't live in the US and there aren't those patent restrictions on it. So if you live in literally any other country, I would extra recommend the PR2. And if you live in the US, I would recommend the PR2 a little bit less because of those extra caveats that I mentioned. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and I hope to see you in the next one, guys. Peace.